Okay guys, I had no other choice but then to resort to the manual way of doing things. Now, before I proceed, I just need to know if you guys can hear me. Once I am aware that you can hear me, then we'll take it from there. Much better now. See, this is why you stick with the old way of doing things. Don't let those fancy cameras fool you. See how much that embarrassed me just now? <laughs> I mean, I, listen, I tried everything in the book. Now I got to actually hold up my cell phone while I look in the scriptures to, uh, to do what I need to do. And this is wrong because the whole purpose of me uh, spending all this money on this equipment was to avoid this. <laughs> but nevertheless, and there's no way I can... Anyway, 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 you know what? Forget all that. Obviously, someone needs to hear what I'm about to say because I've been fought on every, every level, all right? But before, before I even get into this, man, I, you guys got to see this, man. You guys got to see this. All right, take a look at this. <laughs> This is so beautiful, man. This is such a beautiful Saturday morning here in the Bahamas. And this weather is excellent in the beaches. It's by far excellent. Now, like I said earlier, this is not my, my 10 o'clock show on the radio station. That has been postponed till, to 1.30. So we can have that from 1.30 today to 3.30. So I decided to just do this little uh, teaching this morning. In fact, I was supposed to do this from last night. But as usual, you know, I have to deal with 66 million calls and emails and so on. So anyway, I decided to do it this morning. Now, my post said earlier, uh, we're going to be teaching about uh, the righteous being recompensed in the earth. And I really believe there are some people who really, 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 really need to hear this. The reason why you need to hear this is because, as usual, with your Christian journey, it seems as if things has become worse as opposed to being better. You were told a lot of stuff, except Jesus Christ and everything is going to be all right. And, and all this stuff you've been hearing. And so now you're a Christian now. Now you decide to read your Bible and go to church and do all this stuff. And it appears as if all hell breaking loose up in here. Everything that could go wrong could go wrong. The bank people coming to the Yankee car house, uh, the little flower plant and everything. They, they just they just go on with it. So the message, we're just going to be very brief this morning. The intent of it is to encourage you. The intent of it is for you, and this is what I always want to do, for you to see beyond what is physically happening to you. See, this is key. This is what your Christian walk is all about, you know. See, when you were a sinner or when you were in the world or when you did not accept Jesus Christ or when you were not the righteousness of God, then you were subject to those things, okay? But you're not on that level anymore. The Bible and the two particular scriptures I'm going to point out to you this morning have a lot of grand promises. These two promises that I'm going to uh, share with you this morning, the idea of it is to pull you out of your stupor, pull you out of your place of depression, your place of disappointment, your place of confusion, because many of us are like that. Lord, when are you going to send the finances? When are you going to turn stuff around? I tired of hearing these promises and, and there's a shift and, and a breakthrough is coming. I'm sick of that. I'm tired of that. When are you going to now start manifesting? The problem here is, my friend, is that that's the way you see it. But the truth is, God has already manifested. The only, when I say manifested, from a spiritual perspective, God has already done what he needed to do. So the truth is, God isn't getting ready to do anything. God has already done everything. Your job now is to come in agreement with what the Almighty God has already done in spite of how things may look or appear. Why? Because the more you look at your circumstances and you confess your circumstances and you're so convinced of your circumstances and your circumstances seem to be so real to you, then you will have what you say. Child, I'm so broke. I mean, every time I turn around, somebody need this, somebody need that. I cannot keep a dollar in my pocket. Listen to what you're saying. Listen to what you're saying. Listen to what you're saying. And as soon as you see me, child, care when I already holding on to Jesus and changing hands, stop your lies. You ain't holding on to nobody's hand other than your lying tongue right now. So the first deliverance you need is deliverance of that lying tongue. <laughs> but on a serious note, think about the things that you say every day of your life with the expectation of God making things happening for you. God has already done what he needed to do. God has already 
turned the tide. He's already done his shifts. He's already put things in place. Now, compare what I just said with what you're doing, because remember, you are a, 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 a co-laborer with Christ. You're a joint heir with Christ. So listen, look at your part of what you're doing. And all you're doing is speaking negative foolishness on a consistent daily basis with the expectation that God is going to do, uh, it's not do, but he's already done what he had to do, but that what he has promised will come to pass. It's not going to come to pass because you are not being a good co-laborer. Okay? Now, my topic this morning is the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth. I'm not going to take long. The righteous shall be recompensed in the earth. Okay? The word recompense. I want us to define this word first because we're going to look at two scriptures and we're going to really blow the top of this thing. The word recompense literally means to reimburse or to pay someone for losses that they have suffered or to, to replace something that was once lost. And let me give you a perfect example. Let's say you bought a, 19, sorry, a 2017 uh, Cherokee Jeep and uh, you got it insured and everything and you go on the road and boom, somebody, I mean, the entire vehicle was demolished. There's no more use. It is unrepairable. It's unfixable. So your insurance company now is going to recompense you. So the word recompense means to not only pay you for the losses, but pay you in a more detailed understanding for the equivalent of the loss. So therefore, if the truck costs $30,000, then the recompense, or they have to pay you now $30,000 for the physical truck that cannot be repaired anymore. So that's recompense. You're being paid for the losses. Now, with that understanding said, keep that plug in your head because now we're going to go to <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 11, verse 31. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 31. And listen to what it says. It says, for the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth. It didn't say heaven. It didn't say when you die, then God is going to you know, give you some, some cars and jewelry and some gold teeth and uh, some uh, whatever. No. Right here. Right here on this earth, the scripture is clear. And you want, I want you to read it. It says that the righteous... Now, who's going to qualify for this being recompensed? The righteous. You see anybody else there? No. The righteous. Who is the righteous? Well, according to 2 uh, Corinthians uh, 5 and 21, those who have accepted Jesus Christ has become the righteousness of God in Christ. So if you are a Christian, then this you qualify for this particular scripture right here. So the scripture says that the righteous shall be uh, 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 recompensed in the earth. Proverbs 11 verse 31. So what does that mean, Kevin? Think about the losses that you've had. Think about the divorce. Think about the home you've lost or you're in the process of losing. Think about the car, the only car that you had, and the engine just gone on you. And you have no way, no physical way of getting those things. Think about any loss, any loss, any, I don't care where you are in life, any loss. This scripture Proverbs 11, verse 31. Proverbs 11, verse 31 says, To the righteous, it says that the righteous shall be recompensed in, the righteous are going to be repaid for the losses that they have suffered. I didn't make that up. I didn't. That is the word of God. Check it out. The righteous shall be recompensed. The righteous shall be paid the insurance company of heaven. Okay, have already sent in their justice. Okay, everything has been settled. Pay day is coming to the righteous. The, you have lost that nice apartment complex you had. You had a wonderful car. You had a good job with a good promotion. And they did some wicked stuff and got you fired. They lied on you. Whatever it is. Take this moment right now and say, God, I thank you. I thank you that they caused me to be fired. That's not crazy. God, I thank you that I lost my job. I thank you that the bank came in on foreclosure and they took my home after paying 20 years mortgage. I thank you, Father God, that this marriage 
the, the marriage failed, where I'm divorced now. Now, you may say, Kevin, you, okay, I, I got you initially with the recompensing business, but what you mean I must thank God for that? You, you sound crazy now. No, you sound crazy because you don't know the law. The law says, because we can always go back to the law, the law says in 2 Timothy 5 and 18 that we must give thanks in all things. That's what the Constitution says. That's what the law says. The law says you must give thanks in all things. Now, here's where your problem is. Your problem is you have defined the word all as only things that are good. But that isn't what that word all means. The word all in that text means all, everything inclusive, good and bad. Scripture says give thanks in all things. Why? Because this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. Let's try this again. Father, I have lost my home to foreclosure. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I bless you. Father, I honor you. Now, why am I doing that? Because if I'm following the law, the law is saying to me, go read it. You don't have to believe me. Go and read it. Give thanks in all things because at that time, that was the will of God concerning you in Christ. You mean losing my will the will of God? Look here, I'm not here to iron out the details. I'm here to expand on the word. You go read the details. All I read and all I'm interested in reading right now is that I must give thanks in this. But why? Well, okay, seeing that you pressure me, let's go back to verse 31 and let's look at this clause. It says, because the righteous shall be recompensed. That's what it says. And the word recompense means to pay you equivalent for the losses that you have suffered. So whatever you have suffered in this life, whatever you have lost in this life, whatever was a disappointment was taken away from you, however it was taken away, whether it was deceitfully, uh, connive, whatever, the scripture says that the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth. And before I go into the next uh, verse, I want to look at next chapter. I want us to conclude what that same scripture says, because there's more in that scripture. Not only does it says that the righteous will be paid for the things that they have lost, but watch what it says next. It says, so much more the wicked and the sinner. <laughs> now, those who assisted in your losses, those who were key players in your losses, those who had a, 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 a committee to form a strategy as to how they're going to bring disappointment and pain to your life through having things of trap for your life. This is what it says. The scripture says, while when the righteous season comes for them to be paid equivalent to their losses, it says so much more. So that means whatever wickedness the wicked did, so much is they're not going to get a recompense because recompense means that they're going to get an equivalent for what they did. That isn't what the scripture is saying. The scripture says that what's coming to them will far exceed what they've done to others. Y'all ain't hearing me today. Y'all ain't serious today. Listen to me carefully. Whatever they have done to you, they have inspired against you. They have lied. Whatever they have done, the scripture says, oh, Lord, this much. It says, when the season of recompense come to the righteous, when their time of favor come, when God sent in this poison or whatever he does to bring uh, 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 for them to be recompensed, he says, simultaneously, I got a payment for the evil voices. But this time, what I bring into them will exceed what the evil they have done for others. Let me let that digest a little bit. Let me let that digest a little bit because I try to let it digest with me too. The righteous shall be recompensed and God is going to someone listening to me right now you're probably in tears you're probably so excited you needed to hear this because you, you cannot sleep you're at your wits end you've fallen in the past you've called on Jesus the apostle you've fallen the prophet you were the master prophet you know you didn't set the prophet so you went to the master prophet the master prophet 
I can call myself a master prophet. <laughs> anyway, listen, I call him, listen, you call the master prophet, right? And the master prophet didn't have no master answers for you. But I got a master answer for you. And the master answer for you is, if you are, listen to me here, if you, whatever position you're in right now, if you're not a child of God, if you're not a Christian, my advice to you, before I go any further, is that you become a Christian. Here is why I need you to become a Christian, because you need to be qualified for this awesome promise. You need this. You need this in your life. Look at your life, man. Okay, what, how is it profiting you by not living for the Almighty God? What promises do you have from whomever you're serving? What promises are they giving you? Huh? What promises are they giving you? None. But we have a book with six, we have one big book with 66 books in it, saturated, overwhelmingly filled with promises. And today, we're dealing with this one here in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 31. The righteous shall be recompensed. The right, God is going to see to it. Let, let me tell you how God can do this thing for you. Remember the story about Pharaoh, right? Mo, God told Moses, says, listen Moses, go and tell people, I mean, sorry, Pharaoh, let my people go. So Moses said, okay, fine. I can do it. So Moses is about to walk off. And God said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't, don't, don't go yet. Don't go yet. Don't go yet. Let me, let me give you some inside, inside information. He says, I am going to harden the heart of Pharaoh. Now, isn't that interesting? God is sending this brother to tell this superpower to release his people. But God is simultaneously telling him that he, God, the creation of everything is going to be the one responsible for uh, Pharaoh resisting the request of Moses. Why am I telling you this story? And get to that right now. There's a scripture in uh, Proverbs, I'm not sure, but I think it's Proverbs 23 or 26, one of them. The first verse. And you could correct me here. It says that the heart of the king is in the heart of the law of the Lord. And it's now making a comparison, and it says, As a river turn it, so does God turn the heart of that king. Why am I telling you this? Why am I telling you about Pharaoh? Why am I telling you about the scripture in Proverbs? I'm telling you this because in your season of recompense, because this is all a part of the deal, God is going, God, God is going to turn the heart of that wicked poison. The heart of that poison who told you no. The heart of that poison that rejected you. He is the one 